All right, uh, this is a view of the 32nd floor and the windows that the shooter here uh, commenced his, his tirade. Stephen Paddock uh, using these two windows. They're sealed windows, uh, but, but, but shattered them and then ensued with the shooting. We don't know which came first. It looks like he probably had access to a suite of some sort, but you can get a sense from that perch he did a lot of damage here. And it's making people think twice and reassessing uh, looking up and uh, when they're down and, and changes your your perspective a little bit so quite properly in any city now um, people are getting nervous uh, so what to do about that the psychotherapist dr robert ludwig um doctor we were talking about that yeah here at times square just around the block mm -hmm. people are going to be looking up they're going to be a little concerned older hotels that have windows you can manipulate forget about breaking the glass so it's a whole new fear for people. What do you tell them? It is, and, and so it kind of breaks the denial that we're safe, right? But when any incident like this happens, we have to learn very quickly. And so if we can basically communicate to people that we're learning from these situations, which may be an anomaly, how to protect our people better, that certainly helps. Does it help us to feel safe? No, because maybe that's not entirely appropriate. We have to be aware. We have to know that where exits are. We have to do our best to live our lives, but we also want to make sure that we're learning that hotels maybe can ensure the safety by looking at luggage. Whatever the police determine is the best way to proceed is what we need to do to But now you got to wonder whether we need magnetometers now when you check into a hotel and all the other stuff that comes right. with that right. and how this guy got all that weaponry up there. Right. So certainly could have made it in one trip, but um, he was there since last Thursday. So you're examining this. What are you what are you looking at? So we have to look at this man's history. How did it go undetected? What was it about this man that uh, d how did he become so dangerous and undetected? We can learn things in hindsight that can help us as we move forward. There are always going to be these anomalies. So all that we can do is live our lives, right? We have to live our life. We have to live our lives purposely uh, because you don't want to be paralyzed by fear. But I bet you there's not a person walking through some area where there's a great concentration of buildings looking up, if not authorities. Well, that's going to happen yeah. because we want to protect ourselves. So I say, do whatever you need to do to protect yourself, but also live with purpose. And if you can be a part of the solution, that can help tremendously dealing with the personal anxieties that do come up after incidences like this. You know, I got email from people saying, well, you're giving the nutcases ideas, Neil, when you talk about this. I don't think I, I'm the one who started it, but, but given a development like right. this, obviously, people are going to say, gee, you know, all this time, the bad guys have been ramming into people on the streets mm -hmm. or mowing them down or, or finding something to, to inflict a great deal of damage. And then along comes this guy right. who does this from above. And it's a realistic concern because what we know about violence is that it can spread and it can catch. So people can see things and get ideas. There is some truth to that. So how do you handle these stories responsibly? So you're not giving ideas, you're reporting what actually happened happens without some person who's disgruntled, envious, angry, getting an idea of how to harm innocent people. Now, this so happened to be at a concert, you know, it was in its third day. Uh, it might have something to do with that, the large crowd outside. It might have nothing to do with it. He might have planned this just, just taking pot shots at just people gathering you know, along the strip, and there are always a lot of people at any hour of the day, as you know, in that, in that neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. So average people that you talk to, doctor, are gonna be increasingly concerned mm -hmm. about crowds, right. about being outside. What do you tell them? Well, if someone is debilitated by fear, then I say you need to protect yourself. If you really feel afraid to go to a concert and you're going to lose sleep over it, give yourself permission to give yourself a pass, a single pass. But in general, I advise my patients to live their lives and to figure out how to feel as safe as possible under the circumstances. We do have to live our lives. And this doesn't happen all the time. It seems like we're more vulnerable than we actually 
actually are because there's a randomness to it, right? So statistically, it's rare that this will happen, but because it's so random, people do get frightened. But that's what I advise my patients. If you really feel frightened, give yourself a one-off pass. But usually after events like this, we learn a lot. And people are safer after incidences like this because the police are more aware, people are more aware, where these concerts take place are more aware. So in some cases, it is safer after these kinds of incidences. Yeah, doctor, good words of advice. All oh, just try to stay calm. Yeah. As you say, easier said calm, than done. Calm, purposeful, soothe yourself, and, and move forward with purpose. All right, thank you very much, doctor. Good seeing you.